I'm super excited to bring in Ryan Cahoy. Are you there? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Hi. Hello. Good morning. How's it going? Excellent. How are you guys? We are so looking. We're great. Wonderful. Yes. Totally great. So we're sending it off to you. And if we have a little bit more time at the end and you wrap up early, we'll try to grab some some questions, some one-on-one -on -one with you um, over here at the end. So take it away. Okay, great. Well, perfect. Well, thanks everybody for joining me today. Uh, my name's Ryan Kohoy. And for the next 30 minutes or so, I'll give you a quick crash course on uh, how to gather the basic requirements from your client and then find a matching uh, digital signage CMS. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a board member for the Digital Signage Federation. Uh, I contribute to our education committee that helps create ongoing learning courses such as this one. Uh, at the DSF, our approach is for members by members. So this short course contains my advice on how you can quickly narrow down the options to find a match between uh, a digital signage CMS and your client's needs. Um, I've been around uh, different aspects of hardware and software for about 25 years. I started my career at Dactronics, and then I spent 20 years with Rise Vision, which is a web-based digital signage platform. Uh, today, I own my own integration company called Rise Display that focuses on LED ticker displays. So think stock tickers like you'd see on Wall Street or in a business school, or maybe a sports ticker in a casino sports bar. So just like you guys, I, uh, I take hardware and software components, I package them together with all the services uh, that a customer needs to create a solution. Uh, I'm also the chief revenue officer for InReality, which is a venue analytics company. Think small sensors on displays that measure traffic and track engagement. Uh, and just like as many of you were faced this year, selling technology into retail was challenging. So at InReality, uh, we evolved the platform to manage tracking Q&A and temperature screenings you know, this was our pivot to find a, a use for our analytics platform to help organizations create a safe space. And this has given me a, a great opportunity to work closely with uh, a lot of key channel technology partners like ELO and BrightSign and Creative Realities, MIMO Monitors, uh, to help put solutions together for resellers just like you guys. Um, so that, that's kind of enough about me. Let's take a little bit of time to, you know, I guess understand why you guys are here, taking time out of your valuable day. And ultimately, you want to be a hero for your client. You want to help them put the right solution in place. You're experts at hardware. I mean, you guys already get that. But you need software to complete the solution. And the problem is there's just so many choices out there. And as a result, both you and uh, your clients are feeling overwhelmed. I get it. it. It can be overwhelming. But in the next few minutes, I'm going to take you through six simple questions that you can ask to narrow things down and you know, really step in to help your client make those right choices. Now, before you can engage with your client, you, you really need to identify the opportunities. And you know, how many times have you done all the technology for classrooms in a new school building or all the conference rooms in a, a corporate environment? And then you show up a few days later and you see that new digital screen in the lobby provided by somebody else. You know, my plea to you is, don't let somebody else get that business. You know, make sure your clients know that you're there for all their technology, which includes digital signage. Again, you, you already have access to the hardware, the mounts, the displays, the media players. You just need to get comfortable sourcing software to complete that package. Um, and if you've done any research, you're you know, very familiar that there's hundreds of software providers out there and they're all hungry for business. So you know, once you engage these software partners, they're gonna be more than happy to help you do demos and, and help you in narrowing down those specific needs from your clients. So you know, once you've thrown your hat in the ring for digital signage, first question is, you know, why should they go, for, go with you? And you know, to start with, you're likely already engaged with them. You know, you're local versus you know, them having to deal with somebody halfway across the country. Your installers are there providing installation services, and it's going to be less disruptive because it's not going to require a special trip. You're already bringing in all of the AV equipment, you know, video walls, projectors, flat screens, direct view LED. You know, adding digital signage should help increase the overall spend with that partner vendor. It's easy to purchase. You know, what client wants to manage multiple vendors and contracts because ultimately they want one throat to choke, and that's why you know if you're providing all those pieces of technology. They don't have an orphan hanging out there. You get the point. The, the business should be yours. You know, don't let a competitor come in and, and take your account. 
So this, this brings me to the questions. So the very first question I would start with is why? And you know what you wanna do is engage your client. I suggest starting at a really high level. Don't flood them with a whole bunch of questions. Don't make them feel overwhelmed. You know, put them at ease. So it, it doesn't have to be hard. Um, just a few basic things to narrow it down. Your, your approach here is initial matchmaking. You know, focus on the big foundational pieces. And then after you have a match, then you can get into the weeds on the specifics. So again, that very first question before you ask anything else is just simply why. Resist the urge to get into your hardware comfort zone and ask about size and mounting. Just understand what they want to do with the display. For example, if you're talking to a school, their why could simply be they want to replace a digital bulletin board or communicate with students if there's an emergency. If you're talking to a quick serve restaurant, you know, their why could be, you know, I want to change between my breakfast and my menus uh, and my lunch menus more easily. So that's the first question. The next question is determine if the application is something that is touch enabled, requires interactivity, or if it's just a simple passive screen. You know, sometimes this is obvious. Um, you know, you may know the location and the intent, so you don't have to explicitly ask, but it's important to check this box, uh, especially as you, you start a software search. So, you know, using my, my school example again, you know, you're, if you're replacing a bulletin board, it's probably going to be a non interactive display. The next thing you want to understand is the scale, both the initial project and then their long term vision. Uh, you know, is this just a couple of screens in the lobby? Or is this the first of a larger rollout with dozens or hundreds of locations? The, the specific number isn't as important as understanding the plan so that you can put the right foundation in place. You know, most software tools are designed to scale, but you, you just don't want to make that assumption because it could be painful later for both you and the client. So again, sticking with my school example, let's say their total project is three screens, a display in the cafeteria, one in the entrance, and one near the gym. The next question you want to ask is, you know, a little bit about the user. Is this a technical graphic designer type? Is it a receptionist with basic computer skills? Um, are your clients, you know, your, your clients really gonna uh, appreciate you asking this question because, you know, they may not know at first, but if you push them a little bit, they need to think about how the screen's gonna get updated. You know, and, and trust me, they're, they're gonna appreciate having this conversation early on. You know, this is also gonna help you because, you know, if you give them a more complicated solution, it's gonna be more support upfront for you. So if you have a basic user, you don't want to give them a complex tool because that's going to mean more handholding. So again, back to the school, if you're talking to IT, they're probably going to recognize that they're not the best source for updating the content. So they're likely going to seek out somebody like the receptionist that's plugged into everything that's going on at the school, and they're going to be best suited to keep that content up to date. So typically, you know, they're a, a non-technical user. So what you're looking for there is something that's simple and easy to use. Now, a vast majority of the digital signage CMSs these days are cloud-based or they have a cloud option, but you still may encounter cases where the internet isn't allowed or you know, IT security policies want to keep everything internal to the network. So you want to ask the question, is this premise-based? Is it cloud-based? Um, if they don't know or don't have a preference, you can probably default to, to cloud. Um, but if they do have a preference, it's, it's likely going to come up right away because they're going to know um, that that's a core requirement for them. So continuing with that school example, if the school doesn't want to maintain servers, because you know they're just going to have a couple, three screens, um, they're probably going to prefer cloud-based. Now, similar to the cloud versus premise question is a question about a preference of operating system. Again, many clients probably aren't going to have a preference. They're going to look to you as the expert to recommend something. But you may encounter organizations where they have a standard, Windows, Chrome OS, BrightSign, and it's good to know that up front. Um, you know, what you don't want to have happen is you show up on site, you're there to do the install, and at the time a red flag goes up. So again, sticking with my school example, you know, let's say the districts has a policy where they really are a Windows environment. So they want to be sure all the devices adhere to that standard. So here's a quick recap of those six questions again. Why? You know, understand the purpose of the sign. The second one, you know, do they need something that's touch enabled and interactive? Um, how many screens do they envision not only today, but in the future? 
Who is updating the content? How technical are they? Is cloud-based going to work? Or is this something where you do require that server on site? And is there a limit to the type of media player or the compatibility of an operating system that you'd select? The goal here is to go through this really quickly with the client so they don't feel overwhelmed. You know, just think a two or three minute conversation to, to gather the, the high level information. So let's say you didn't ask those questions um, and the school just came to you and said, hey, I need a quote for digital signage. You go do a Google search, you start calling on CMS providers, you get to sales and you say, I need a quote for your software. You know, how do you think that conversation is going to go? I bet there's going to be a lot of questions trying to figure out what will work. And more challenging is you're going to expend a, a lot of resources and energy doing demos, doing quotes. And in the end, you might find out that it doesn't match. So my suggestion is you take those six questions and you create a short 10 second summary. Think of it as an elevator pitch. So now when you call on that CMS provider, you can say something like, I'm working with a school that's looking to deploy three non-interactive displays with the primary goal of student communications and showing emergency alerts. They want a cloud-based system that's designed to run on a Windows operating system. And the primary user is going to be the receptionist, so a non-technical user. Is this something you can help me with? I put forward that with this approach, if you contacted six, eight, 10 different CMS providers in a pretty short period of time, probably less than an hour, you're going to be able to be able to narrow down a choice. What you're looking for is that instant response where after you, you make that statement, the provider comes back and says, that's exactly what we do. We just installed a project at XYZ school doing that exact same thing. When you hear that, you've got a match. If they him, ha, they ask some questions, you know, would you consider this? Could you, you know, you can probably eliminate them because again, there's a, a lot of fish out there in the sea. Um, you also may get a red flag when a CMS provider comes back saying things like, oh, well, we're not a cloud-based system or we only operate on Linux. Again, these are easy to eliminate. Move on to the next that fits these core requirements. Now, when you're making the calls, you're really looking to just narrow your field down to two or three that best fit this high-level summary. Don't worry about all the basics, you know, getting into things like uh, file formats and window design, supporting multiple users. You know, at, at this point in time, you know, it's kind of the way the, the industry has evolved. Nearly every software company does these things pretty well. What you want to do is look at the big foundational pieces, you know, find a match when, um, you know, you line up that demo between your end user and the CMS provider, they can go through these things. You know, here's where the CMS provider is going to point out their key features and benefits. And then during the demo, the client's going to latch on to things that they feel are important. And that's where you drill into those topics. So again, your job as the integrator is matchmaking. Put the CMS and the client together, see if there's a spark. So coming back to the six questions, you know, how did I come up with these? Um, so I'm just going to go through each one a little bit more detail here. The first one, again, is the most important. You know, this is the why. If you understand this one, you can really narrow down the search to specific companies that do specific things. So a digital bulletin board, a menu board, a Hall of Fame display, etc. You know, just saying that you do digital signage a few years ago was acceptable. You could be a generalist. But now there's hundreds of software companies that are out there and you can always find organizations that specialize. And if you give your client a specialized tool, it's probably going to solve problems that they haven't even thought of yet. So, you know, if you frame your example right up front to that CMS company that you're looking for them to show you an example of X, Y, Z, and they don't offer one up or they can't provide one, you know, this is probably where you keep looking. You know, more than any other feature, what's most critical is that you solve the why. Um, the next question, interactive, you know, there are some software platforms out there that do both interactive and passive, but typically providers specialize in one or the other. You know, if your client's looking at a mixed use case, you know, where they're using some interactive and some passive screens, uh, you know, they, they may be faced with a choice of using a software tool that supports both, or they could consider running two separate platforms, one for each application. Um, but for interactive, you really want to understand how the content's created. That's important. Is it something that's done in the platform? Is it custom coding? Is it sourced by the provider? 
you know, all these questions kind of match back up to that type of client that you've got and, you know, what their skill set is for maintaining content. If you're looking at non-interactive, you know, it opens up more software choices and, and tools that are out there. The next question uh, in terms of scale, you know, if your client's just looking for one screen, it's going to be simple. You're, you're probably looking at simple, low cost, potentially free tools. And, um, you know, that's where you, you really need to think through if they're looking at more screens, how does it scale? You know, for example, with PowerPoint, uh, and I, if I was using that for a simple screen, that's not going to scale. Where if I'm looking at a larger network of, of things, I want a tool that's going to fit into that. So, you know, if the client just has a couple of screens, you know, you probably don't want to reach out to that platform that was designed to run large retail networks and has AI integrated for smart playlists. You know, so keeping keeping in mind what type of scale your client's looking at. And there's, there's not necessarily a point of no return. If you do start with a small uh, application and your client outgrows it, grows it, you can certainly make a change. You just deal with retraining users, redefining processes. So it's always best if you can find a CMS that's gonna fit for the long haul. Now, uh, as I said before, you know what's almost as important as the why is the who. If your client's technical and they have design skills, you know they're gonna want a system with a lot of horsepower and flexibility. And there's some amazing tools that are out there that have advanced editors for designing content, giving complete control over the design. Um, and they may be even looking for something that's got a full HTML editor or integrations with Adobe or other tools. But there are other use cases where they're going to delegate this to a non-technical user. And that's where you want to look for software that's simple, point and click UI. They have a lot of templates. And for these users, you, you want to spend time digging into those template libraries because you want to look at specific types of content. You know, for example, if you find a CMS company that's saying, I've got a thousand templates, but all those templates are menu boards, that's probably not ideal for a school that's going to want to do teacher and student highlights type of thing. So, you know, just like that interactive versus passive point, you know, software tools have picked a direction. Some have invested in, you know, complex, you know, detailed editing tools. Some have focused on simple templates. Neither one's right or wrong. It really comes down to the match with your user's skill set and what type of tool is going to be best for them to most efficiently update their screens. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you know, most applications these days are cloud-based. Um, but it does make sense to check this box, especially if you're doing projects for government or areas that have a lot of proprietary information. Um, you know, where they're not going to want their data out on the cloud. You know, understanding a premise-based requirement is really going to narrow down your list of providers. So, you know, you don't want to waste time evaluating tools that aren't going to fit. And, you know, the key indicators you're looking for here are security or lack of internet connectivity, because those are two of the key reasons um, that they'll, they'll look at a premise-based system. But the other thing to watch for is if you've got a client that just absolutely won't sign up for a subscription service because cloud-based systems typically have a subscription component. So that's another red flag uh, to watch for. On the OS, again, most clients probably aren't gonna have a strong preference, but if they're adamant that they want a particular OS, again, it's gonna limit your search because you're gonna want those that are compatible. And a lot of digital signage CMS providers have chosen to focus on just one or two operating systems that are out there. You know, this also comes into play if your client's very cost conscious, because you may need to look at providers that have built to support things like system on a chip or that are using Android or other low cost devices. Again, you don't want to spend a lot of time doing a demo and then find out that the client, you know, doesn't want to use that operating system. So, you know, as you can see, the goal with these questions is to quickly assess if the CMS company checks all the main boxes so that you can move to that demo with your top two or three. You know, don't settle, pick companies that check all the boxes. Cause again, there's a lot of CMS providers that are out there. And when you have a fit, you know, this is where you move to, again, play matchmaker, put your client and the end user, or sorry, the client and the CMS company together and see if this is what they envisioned. You know, this is gonna help position you as an expert because you're gonna narrow down the myriad of choices that are out there and just bring the top ones for your client to consider. Um, and again, you know, this is where you want to look for those CMS providers that specialize in a market vertical. 
you know, this is going to help your client feel comfortable that they're using a tool that their peers are using. It's always a really awkward moment when a client asks, you know, can you give me an example of another, you know, client like me that's using this? And the provider says, you know, well, we mainly do X, you would be our first client. You know, that's what you want to try to avoid is those, those awkward situations. Now, after a demo, you know, if everything looks good, this is where you want to spend a little bit of time checking out that provider, doing the due diligence. You know, how stable are they? You know, what's their install footprint look like? And I'm not saying more installs is necessarily better. You just want to make sure it isn't vaporware. You know, you don't want your client to be their first client. Um, how do they offer support? Is it open during your client's business hours? You know, if the most important time is the evening dinner rush and the CMS provider's help desk closes at 5 p.m., that could be a red flag. Um, you know, what type of content services do they offer? If I'm doing menu boards, do they have uh, templates or design help for that specific need? If I'm doing interactive experiences, do they have resources to help with that design? You know, what does their development look like? You know, are they constantly improving the platform? Do the clients get those updates? You know, it, you know, you want to make sure it's an evolving product that's staying up with advancing trends. And then check references and not just every re any reference. You know, you want to find clients that are similar to your client. If they're a school, talk to other school clients. Don't talk to a bank. Um, and just a couple of other tips here. You know, stay on point during a demo. Don't get distracted by shiny objects. You know, keep the demo focused on your client's key use case. If you're installing a menu board, have them show you creating a menu. Don't look at how they create interactive wayfinding. And, you know, this is where you really want to dig in, you know, beyond the high level questions to investigate the features of the content that are important. You know, do you need a point of sale integration or do you need to see how pathways are drawn in wayfinding? Again, Pick the CMS that's doing the job at hand, not vague maybes for things that your client may never use. Otherwise, you know, they could end up paying for features that, that just really aren't, out, aren't relevant. Um, and you'll notice none of my questions revolved around price. Don't start there. Understand the why um, and find the best tool for the job. If you start by putting the emphasis on price, the important details uh, you know, are going to get lost. So while all roads lead to price, in the end, it's why it's good to have two or three options to evaluate uh, so that you can see the different price points for comparison and most importantly, um, things uh, get the right CMS tool to get the job done. Uh, if you do go with something that's just low cost, what you may find is it's hard to update uh, and the content uh, you know, just gets lost. You know, nobody updates it. You know, so sometimes to accomplish what's needed, the client may need to budget more today to save them time, pain, and effort down the road. So I'd really encourage you to resist the urge to spend time on price up front until you see if there's a match that's there. Now, every software provider knows exactly how to demo their software to make it look easy. They're not gonna show you the complicated and the confusing parts. A demo is an important part to see what's possible and identify the key features, but don't just buy off the demo ask for a 30 day trial, actually set up some content, use it to see how it works. You know, this is where you're gonna find the gotchas, things that you didn't even think to ask during the demo. And even better, if you've got a large project, you know, pick a pilot, you know, deploy just one or two, get a feel for how everything's gonna work before you make that commitment for the larger project. You know, sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. So it's better to start small, fail fast, and then adjust and have your versus having your client spend a large sum of money to learn, you know, this just didn't solve their problem anyway. So um, I know this was short, quick, I covered a lot of ground, but I want to leave you with my top three takeaways. Number one, make digital signage part of your solution. Don't let somebody else take this business from you. You're there, you've earned the client, you know, get all of the business. Start with the why. You know, the very first question you should ask, you know, regardless of how the client positions it to you, understand the purpose. You know, don't gravitate to size, don't gravitate to price. Really understand the, plan, the pain your client's going through and then how you can help them solve it. And then stay high level in the beginning. You know, take simple requirements, do the interviews, uh, only invest the time with those that have the best offering for your specific client. You know, 
it's okay to reach out to 20 different CMS companies. If you're going to spend just five minutes pre-qualifying them, narrowing it down to a couple. What you don't want to do is spend hours of your time and your client's time doing demos with providers that aren't going to be a fit, aren't going to match in the end. And that's it. Um, I, I'm going to hang around the launch platform for you know the next half hour, hour. So if anybody has questions, like there is a, a section in there, you know, feel free to connect up with me. Uh, I also put my LinkedIn uh, details on uh, the screen. You know, happy to have more friends. If you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, LinkedIn, I'm always uh, happy to lend my opinion if anybody has any questions. And, and then a quick plug for the DSF: if if you're not a member of the Digital Signage Federation. I would encourage you to join. You know, we've got an online library of, I think it's just over 30 educational courses right now, all specifically focused on digital signage. So with that, um, thanks everybody for the time. And awesome. I, I really hope you have success pursuing digital signage. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you so much for everything. Um, I will say if you could hang out with us for a couple minutes, I know you mentioned, um, you know, you're very open for other people to, to reach out to you via LinkedIn, but that was some really insightful information from every time that you said, start with why I keep thinking Simon Sinek, <laughs> but um, oh, I, I love that you, you really provide. Yeah. I love that you really provided some tangible questions and, and just strategies to pre-qualify and vet. Um, beforehand. Uh, we have a couple of questions coming in actually uh, from the audience uh, that I would, if, if you could take a couple of minutes to answer, I'd, I would really appreciate that. Oh yeah. yeah, that's great. Fire away. All right. So I got uh, Sheldon Silverman uh, asking, are easy integrations with programmatic platforms now table stakes for DS software? Yeah, you know, it's it's been a real growing trend and there's been a lot of advance in, advancement that. Um, so I think if if your clients are looking for programmatic, you know, again, back to those qualifying questions, if you understand why and what they're trying to do, you know, going in and evaluating those companies and making sure they have the right tools behind it to support those programmatic buys. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's becoming a very popular trend. Fantastic. And I have another trend type of question as well. I have one from David Keene um, and mm -hmm. kind of sharing his experience about from a few years back, uh, he felt that every CMS provider at the high end could answer any functionally question, um, functionality question with, sure, we can do that. And then if they couldn't do it at the moment, they'd get their programmers in the back to add that functionality for the customer, um, you know, just in time programming for, for lack of better terms, as he, as he puts it. Is, do you feel like the CMS landscape is different today? And I think you touched a little bit about um, some of the templates that a lot of CMS providers are offering, but what are your thoughts on how it's progressed today versus maybe a few years back? I still think some of that exists for a degree. I think the common answer from any software CMS provider is with enough time and enough money, anything's possible. Um, so it, it right. still does exist. And that may be, you know, for clients that have very unique use cases, that may be the best approach is to get something customized for them. But I do think there's a lot of options today. You know, there's hundreds of CMS companies that are out there. So, you know, does a client want to be a guinea pig? Do they want to be a first? Or again, back to asking why, getting the core requirements. If you narrow those choices down in interview, you're bound to find somebody that's already done that or already conquered it. And, you know, that, that may be a better option versus being learning ground for a software provider. Sure. Yeah. And you did mention that in, in your um, uh, in your session as well, uh, you know, really digging to make sure that that person understands the, the need and has worked with something similar um, or the in industry similar to what you're trying to accomplish and um, maybe a project that you're trying to accomplish as well. So um, I have one last question. I think we have a minute left um, from sure. Robert. Uh, Robert A, who are some of your favorite CMS providers for an easy solution and for a more enterprise scalable solution? So this is your time. If you feel like plugging anybody, some shameless plugs, um, you know, go ahead and name drop if you'd like to. Uh, but we, that is what Robert wants to know. So, I mean, there's a lot of great providers that are out there. Uh, I mean, I, I spent 20 years at Rise Vision, so I'm very partial to them. They have a, a simple, easy to use platform. 
Um, I, again, I come back to use case. Like if you're looking at menu boards, mm -hmm. I mean, and you're looking at scale, companies like Stratacash are fantastic. Uh, you know, Ping HD does a good job. Uh, you know, if you're looking at specialized things, you know, you can get into the Scala's, the Omnivex's, the Four Winds of the world. I mean, th there's there's no shortage of really good software providers that are out there. Uh, again, I, I look at the match because, you know, you, you mentioned the, you know, what's your favorite, but then, you know, what's, I think they said, you know, economical or price rate. You know, that's a tricky yeah. question because it's not always about the price. It's about solving the problem at right. hand. And if there's a lot of pain with that problem, it may make sense to pay more because it'll save the company money over time. Right. Yeah. And I know what they mentioned was a scalable solution. So same same up application, yep. I would assume. Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out to answer some of those questions. And thank you again for your session. I really appreciate that. We're going to head back to the studio and, and head into the, our next session as well. So thanks. our next little, yeah, thanks again. Thank you.